Welcome to the virtual college fair for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Marist College. Take it away. Thank you. Um... Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jesse Munjin. I am uh, the Regional Mission Counselor uh, for uh, Virginia. I am also an alum of Marist. I graduated in 2011 with my uh, degree in criminal justice, minor psychology. Um, I've been working for Marist for the past eight years. So it's a pleasure uh, to speak with you. Marist, uh, just to give you a little information about Marist, we are located, it's a private liberal arts college located in Poughkeepsie, New York. It's about an hour and a half north of New York City, hour and a half south of Albany. So we're, uh, we're right in between, nestled in a great area. Uh, we're right on the banks of the Hudson River. Um, the area that we in provides a great opportunity for a lot of our students in terms of uh, research, internships, and um, uh, just some fun times. In terms of the facts, uh, Marist is a, uh, a mid-sized institution, five, just over 5,000 undergraduate students who are studying over 40 different majors. Uh, there's a lot of uh, flexibility for students in terms of uh, double majoring, majoring and minoring, um, having a few different minors, certificate programs, uh, you name it. You really want our students to uh, pursue their goals and passions. So a lot of options for students. Um, we have students coming from 47 different states, 64 different countries as well. Um, typical class sizes are small. We have um, on average 18 to 26 students per class. Largest class, 35 students. There's no lecture halls. There's no graduate assistants, no teaching assistants. Um, all the classes are taught by full-time um, uh, faculty members who 77% uh, of them have their PhD or terminal degree in their field. Um, we do have housing available for all four years. Uh, uh, 94, 96% uh, of our students do live on campus for their first year. And our students are successful once they leave us. 98% of them are um, employed or attending graduate school six months after graduation. These are the majors that we have available for our students. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of flexibility when you apply to Marist, you're applying to the school as a whole not to a particular major. So that offers um, our students the opportunity to pursue what they want. Um, there's only two programs that they have to, that you have to apply directly to, to uh, gain entrance into them. And that is our fashion design and our um, fashion design program and our studio art program. Um, those require portfolio pieces to uh, start. As far as the uh, uh, learning, um, what's happening on campus. It's a lot of hands-on experimental learning. Um, we have some state-of-the-art facilities on campus that really um, help our students to have internship level experiences without leaving campus. And then we strongly encourage our students to either complete an internship or to um, complete some type of research or study abroad. We have a, a ton of different opportunities for students to do so um, in our local area as well as a lot of our students take advantage of uh, New York City and, and the giant city that that is. And uh, we, Marist actually has an additional campus in, in Florence, Italy. So we, a lot of our students do head um, to study abroad all over the world, but Florence is number one for us. As far as student life, um, we have an active and involved student body on our campus. Uh, lots of different clubs and organizations for students to take advantage of. We are a division one school. Um, and there are a ton of different activities that are happening throughout the year. Most students do not go home on the weekends. It is, uh, we, we really have to force them to leave during the breaks. Um, it's the type of place that most students wanna stay and hang out with their friends and um, be involved on our campus. In terms of applying, uh, we have um, a couple different options. Uh, 
three deadlines, November 15th, February 1st, March 1st. Uh, we are on the Common App, uh, the uh, Coalition App, and our own application. We have no preference. Um, just please get your information to us by these deadlines. Um, it's in terms of what we're looking for in, in a student, we take a holistic approach. Um, this is the middle 50% in terms of numbers, but we look at, are you taking more uh, classes in core subject areas? Um, as well as if you have the ability to take honors AP college level classes, um, IB programs, things like that. Uh, we have been test optional for over 10 years now. So um, you can choose to submit test scores to us or not. Uh, if you don't, we feel that four years of high school academics is a great indication of how successful you'll be on our campus. Um, we are open currently, 90% of our classes are in person. Um, so we do have some in-person visit options available. We also have uh, other virtual programs, um, including a academic open house this, this upcoming weekend. Um, so tons of options, please just visit our website to see that all. And lastly, um, this is my information in case you uh, have questions after this, uh, please ask your questions in the chat. Um, and I uh, thank you all for uh, spending some time with me today. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from University of Mary Washington. Hi, everybody. My name is Takira Zajac, and I'm with the University of Mary Washington. Um, I've worked with the university for the last 10 years. I'm an alum from the university and I am currently in our MBA program. Um, the University of Mary Washington is located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And with that, we are halfway between Washington DC and Richmond, Virginia. So it's a pretty, pretty ideal location for our students. We have a population of 4,200 undergraduates and we are on the smaller size side of the medium sized schools. Uh, we have three colleges. We have the College of Arts and Science, Business and Education. Um, and with those, all three colleges offer a lot of research opportunities as well for our students. Um, with the research opportunities, you do have the ability to do individual research projects or you can pair up with a faculty member if there is one that is also participating in a research project that you are interested in. Um, in addition to research opportunities, we have a lot of internship opportunities. Our internships have a specific department that that's all they work on with you is figuring out um, who has had internships before, who's looking for interns now. Um, they'll work with you on your resume, get you set up with some like interviews. So they do a lot to, to really help you with that. Our um, study abroad program is currently a little wonky because pandemic, right? But normally we have 157 different opportunities. So you can do the traditional study abroad opportunity where you study in Paris or London for a semester or a year. Um, but there's a lot of smaller trips that you can also attend um, that are attached to classes. So those also offer a lot of opportunities. With study abroad, you can also take advantage of research opportunities or internships while also studying abroad. So those are a lot of different opportunities that we have. Um, for the university, we are a D3 school. We, um, so we don't do sports scholarships. We have everything but football. We're not a football school. Still have homecoming every year, but um, in addition to our sports, we have over 150 different clubs and organizations to join. Um, with that, some of them are sports related. If you don't want to participate on the varsity level, you still have the clubs that you can do. Some of them are related to your majors. Some can be vocals, dance, service-based clubs. Um, some of them can be random and fun like our video game club or our anime club. Um, so you have a, a lot of different opportunities to really get out there and meet your people while you're at the university. So for us, we do have three deadlines, November 1 for early decision, and that is our binding agreement. Um, so if we say yes, this is where you're going. Early action is November 15th and regular decision is uh, February 1. I am a test choice school, 
meaning you can choose to send me your SATs, ACTs, or nothing at all. We do acknowledge that the world shut down and a lot of the seniors did not get to take their test. That is okay. We do not require your scores anyway. Um, the exception to my rule is nursing. You apply directly into our nursing program from the common application or from our personalized application, personal preference. Um, and then from there, if you have a 3.5 GPA or higher, you can still opt to remain test optional for my nursing program. Um, if you are anything lower than that, unfortunately, I will still need to see your scores. Uh, so please get those to us. The honors program is the other one that you directly apply to from the application. Um, and that one requires a 3.9 GPA or higher. With this slide, you can see all of our student profile. And this is from our last class that came in. And so that's with that population of the 4,200 um, that you are looking at. We are doing in-person visits as well as virtual visits. We are open. We do have half of our population back on campus. Everybody got to choose whether or not they came back to campus or if they decided to stay home and do everything virtually. It was a choice so that everybody could be as comfortable as possible with the pandemic going on at this time. Um, so we are doing in-person visits. We do them Monday through Saturday. Unfortunately, you can't actually access any of our buildings because we are trying to keep our students that are on campus with us as safe as possible. But you are more than welcome to pair our in-person visit with our virtual tour, which will take you through the residence halls and some of the buildings on campus so you can still get an idea of uh, Mary Washington life. Um, so that's all that I have for you for now. Please feel free to reach out if you use the admit email. Um, it will populate you to the correct area. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Eckerd College and don't forget to send in your Q&A questions. Hi, uh, sorry, my name is Bill Berg-Alberts. I am an admissions counselor here at Eckerd College um, and I represent students from the Virginia area. We are a small private liberal arts and science college located in St. Petersburg, Florida, so just south of Tampa. Um, and we have just shy of 2000 students with just over 180 acres. Um, so I'm gonna speak briefly on some of the unique features of our campus. One of which is our autumn term experience. To fully understand that though, there are two things you should make note of. One is the geographic reach of our students. So our students are roughly about 80% out of state and truly coming from across the country and the world. On average, our students are traveling over a thousand miles to get to campus. Nationally, students tend to travel closer to 200 miles. So our students are definitely looking to go further away from home and tend to be a bit more adventurous. Additionally, they tend to be the only kid coming from their graduating class. So our students are coming from far away and don't typically know many other students. Also important to know our academic calendar. So we have a 414 calendar, which means our students take four classes in the fall, four in the spring, and then we have a short term requirement that our sophomore through seniors are fulfilling with our autumn term. Um, or not our winter term where they take three classes, uh, one class over three weeks in January. Our first year students are doing that with our autumn term though. So they are arriving to campus three weeks before the fall semester starts. And this is really because of that geographic reach of our students. And so the idea of this is that they're really getting a more in-depth orientation experience. So they're in class Monday through Friday, nine to 12. And then in the afternoon, they're doing in-depth orientation where they're really getting to know the different departments on campus, getting to know the different resources, getting to know one another. Um, this is really to aid that transition from high school to college and from the Mid-Atlantic region to Florida, both are very big transitions. And so this time really helps them adjust and our students really find us helpful since they're coming from so far away. We do have over 40 different majors on our campus. Truly, as you can see, they are represented across different academic disciplines. Anything with an asterisk is only represented as a minor. Some of our top programs though, our number one is our marine science for one of the top programs in the country. And then also our animal studies, our environmental studies, our psychology, and our international relations are other really big programs. But our students are truly learning across the spectrum. 
some unique features on our campus, two of which you can see in this photo. One, due to our location, we do have our own private beaches. Uh, Wi-Fi does extend to the beaches so students can get their homework done on the beach. And then another part that you can see in this photo is the dog. We are the pet friendliest college in America. So students can bring their pets to campus as long as they are 45 pounds and under and not classified an exotic animal. Um, our students definitely do make use of this um, and they're very much a part of our campus life and traditions on campus. So one of my favorite traditions is the pet graduation. So a couple of days before our humans graduate, the pets of our graduating seniors also get their own ceremony where they get uh, mini certificates. Some of the dogs are even wearing caps and gowns. Very adorable. One of my favorite times of year. The unique feature of our campus is our waterfront which has three components to it. Academic, where our students in our environmental studies and our uh, marine science classes will take out the boats, go out into the bay, collect samples, be back in the lab and working on all of that all within one class period due to our location. Two is our recreational. So students for free can take out kayaks, paddle boards, canoes, fishing gear. They can go wakeboarding, water skiing, sailing, a wide variety of water sports all for free as a student. And third is a service component. So we have an organization called Eckerd College Search and Rescue. We're the only collegiate organization in the country that works with the Coast Guard. So our students are fully trained to respond to calls out in the bay. Due to our location, are quite often first on scene and are equipped to respond right away. They do not need to wait for the Coast Guard. They're not shadowing them by any means. They are fully trained. On average, they respond to just over 500 calls a year. Um, so I'm very proud of this. And as I said, any college in the country that works with the Coast Guard. So just some application stuff. You can apply on the Common App or through our own application, no preference either way, um, whatever is easiest for you. Then for the app, you just need your official high school transcripts. Our average GPA is a 3.45 unweighted. We have gone test optional for the next two admission cycle. So it's completely up to you if you would like to submit test scores. You will still be reviewed for merit scholarships without those. So it's just if you want that to be part of your admissions decision. Our average SAT is a 1200 and our average ACT is a 26. Then we need one letter recommendation from an academic source, so either a counselor or a teacher, and then your personal essay. Two timelines to apply, early action, which is if you apply by November 15th, you're guaranteed a decision mailed by December 15th, and you can get the application fee waived. This is non-binding, you still have until May 1st to make a decision, you just have a little bit more time to do so. And then after that, we go into rolling decision where within three to four weeks of your application being complete, you'll receive your decision. And then we just like to end it on this quote from Colleges That Change Lives. Eckerd College might seem like the perfect spot for an easy college career, four years marked by sun, surf and sand. But if you're looking for a vacation, you should enroll elsewhere. Obviously I spent time speaking about our beaches, my waterfront and our students certainly utilize that. But the academics is still crucial as well. And our students really find that balance in their lives. Um, I highly recommend checking out the Colleges That Change Lives book as a college resource. And feel free to reach out at any point if you do have any further questions about Eckerd College. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from James Madison University. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Carlberg, and I am an assistant director with the Office of Admissions at James Madison University. I am a my master's degree in history, and I've been able to teach for the university part time as well. Um, I do notice that it says my internet is unstable, so I apologize if I pause here and there. Uh, James Madison University is a medium-sized public university in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, we are located about two hours from Washington, D.C. and two hours from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we are a public four-year liberal arts institution uh, with an 89% freshman retention rate. Uh, so that's a, state, uh, that's a um, statistic that we're very, very proud of. Uh, that means our freshmen uh, are academically eligible to return, but also they want to come back. Uh, we are also a very uh, school spirited uh, institution. So we have lots of purple and gold that people wear all the time, I'm wearing my purple today. Um, and we're division one for uh, varsity sports. 
and we have a number of sports teams uh, for both men and women. A uh, couple other things, we are primarily an undergraduate institution. So we have 22,000 students, but 20,000 undergraduates. Uh, and we are, because we're a public state university, most of our students do come from the state of Virginia, but we do have students coming from all over the country uh, and a number of outside of the country as well. A uh, couple things about our admissions process here at JMU. Um, we are, um, focused on your academic performance in history. Um, and so you are able to submit some supp supplemental uh, pieces, uh, but the things that we do require are an application. Uh, we're, we have our own application and we're also part of the coalition application. Um, and we need your official high school transcripts with your senior year schedule included. That's all it is that we need for you to apply. Uh, when we make our admissions decisions, we're really looking for you to challenge yourself within the context of your high school. So if you have the opportunity to take some of those uh, rigorous courses like AP, IB, Cambridge, dual enrollment and honors classes, we do expect to see some of those on your transcript. Uh, and then we uh, really zone in on your core curriculum areas. Uh, so we're really only interested, we're really only looking at those English, math, lab, science, social studies and foreign language classes. And because of that, we're more interested in your individual letter grades in those areas and not so much in your GPA. So we do like to see mostly A's and B's in those core academic areas. We are another test optional school. We have been test optional for a number of years and they do not play a role in our admissions decision, whether you submit them or not. Uh, so please, I know that seniors this year are really stressed out about that, but if you're applying to JMU or looking to apply to JMU, Please do not stress out about your test scores. We do not need them and we don't use them in our admissions decisions. We also admit to the university as a whole and not to a program of study. Uh, so what you put down on your application as what you plan to study is more about pairing you with the correct academic advisor uh, should you ultimately decide to come to JMU. We have two application deadlines. Uh, we are early action deadline is November 15th and that's non-binding. Students who apply early action will hear back from us sometime in the middle of January. Uh, and then our February 1st regular decision deadline, uh, those students who apply then will hear from us in March, or students who get deferred from early action to regular decision will hear back from us then as well. A couple things about JMU, we have over 130 programs of study, uh, and they are broken up into different colleges here at JMU. So you can see uh, some of the fun statistics about our different colleges here at JMU. Uh, we, again, admit to the university as a whole. There are a couple uh, exceptions to that rule. For those of you looking to study in the visual and performing arts or uh, want to study in the Honors College, they both do require an additional application after you have applied to JMU, uh, the institution as a whole. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, and those processes uh, can happen at the same time. And all of that information is available on our website and through the website of the different programs here uh, that you see on the screen. Uh, we are uh, pretty easy to get to for uh, different places. Uh, like I said, we're about two hours out of Washington, D.C. and two hours of Richmond. You can see here right, right on Highway 81. Uh, there is an airport about 20 miles away uh, that does direct flights to Chicago and also to uh, Dallas. So it is quick to get here, easy to get here, and you can connect to anywhere from those two cities. Uh, there's lots of uh, great outdoor activities. We're in the Shenandoah Valley surrounded by beautiful mountains. So there's hiking. The Shenandoah National Park is only about 30 miles away. And Harrisonburg is a great little town. It's about 50,000 people. And JMU is very much a part of that. So our students become a community member at, in JMU, but also uh, part of uh, Harrisonburg community. Our students are also very actively involved in campus life. There are over 450 different student clubs and organizations that range from acapella groups to intramural sports to hiking and adventure clubs uh, to Greek life. Uh, and there's really something for everyone. And because we're such an active com community campus, our students tend to stick around over the camp over the weekends. We're not a commuter school. Um, so for those students who are looking to come here from out of state, um, just know that people are here on campus uh, over the weekends and don't go home very much. Um, we do have an opportunity for you to visit and connect with us, so please check out those websites there. And if you're not on our mailing list, please feel free to do that. Uh, and we look forward to uh, answering your questions here shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
So just a reminder to send in any of your Q&A questions. And lastly, we'll be hearing from Mount St. Mary's University. It's in present nice. mode again, if you can flip. Yeah. I think it's good to go. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Casey Smile. I'm an admissions counselor here at Mount St. Mary's University. I'm also a proud Mount alum, class of 20. So um, for time's sake, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into things. So the Mount was founded in 1808 by Father John Dubois when he fled the French Revolution. So he actually went down to Virginia first then made his way up to Maryland where he founded our university. So we have 212 years of Catholic tradition here at the Mount. Now, while we are a Catholic university, you are at no point ever required to attend mass. However, if you are a Catholic and would like to attend mass, um, you can attend mass in one of our six uh, chapels that are running mass throughout the day all the time. So to go over some demographics, uh, we are a relatively small university. So we come in at just under 2,000 students in our undergraduate population. Um, we are 50-50 male-female ratio. And then we, while we are small, we represent um, students from 44 states and 37 countries. Um, so we're kind of all over the map. And you'll notice that number down there at the bottom, 68% uh, of our students live on campus. We are not a commuter school. Um, students like to be here. And even the students who do commute, um, they are found coming back after class every day, coming in on the weekends, because there is never a dull moment here at the Mount. So we have um, over 70 plus majors and minors here. And I like to tell students that our uh, class schedule is divided into three different sections. So about a third of it is divided into our core curriculum. Those are general education classes for all students. About a third is dedicated to your major. And then a third is dedicated to some flex room. So we don't expect you to come to the Mount knowing exactly what you would like to do, um, exactly what you would like to major in. We want you to figure that out while you're here. Um, so you don't have to declare a major till the end of your sophomore year. And that flex room um, is really awesome because it allows you to try a bunch of different classes and really figure out what you would like to major in. So now um, our average class size is around 18 students. The biggest class that you're going to have will be no, uh, no bigger than 25 students and those are going to be your um, first year classes and then once you declare a major the class sizes will start getting smaller and smaller. Um, this is really important because you're able to build connections with your professors. It's also important when it comes time for you to do an internship. So 76% of our students will do an internship before they graduate and um, we always like to tell a funny story of why this is important. Um, one of our admissions counselors here he knew that he wanted to be a I think third grade history teacher until he did an internship. Um, he realized that is not what he wanted to do. <laughs> um, so he wanted to teach high school. So we like to encourage students to do an internship because it helps you discover exactly what you like and don't like. Also, it's great for getting experience on your resume. Now, a big question I get from students are what is there to do on the Mount campus besides just go to class? Uh, so our neighboring cities are Washington and Baltimore. We're about an hour out from each. And then our neighboring towns are Gettysburg, which is about 15 minutes north of us, and Frederick, which is about 25 minutes south of us. But the Mount does a really great job making sure there is never a boring moment um, on our campus. So we have over 70 clubs and organizations that students can get involved in. Um, those are anywhere from our activities management programs, which handle our school dances, I know everyone's thinking, oh my gosh, another high school dance. These are not like your high school dances. They're a lot of fun. We bring um, bands to campus. We bring DJs to campus. Um, we have our Outdoor Adventures Club, which has never been more popular. Um, we definitely take advantage of where we're located on the mountain. We run trips, hiking, camping, kayaking, rock climbing. So there's definitely a lot to do for students to get involved. On top of that, we are a Division I school. We have 24 um, NCAA Division I athletics teams. And our uh, arenas, guys, they will sell out. Students love to go to the games. Um, a big incentive for students to go to the games is with free food. We'll do free Chipotle nights, free Chick-fil-A nights to students. Um, so definitely attending our games is a lot of fun. And of course, uh, if you are very passionate about a sport and you don't want to play Division One, you don't want to get up early for lifts, we offer 13 club uh, sports, which are Mount Suey's competing against other universities, and 17 intramural sports, um, which are equally as competitive as Division One. I like to say. They're a lot of fun. Um, now 75% of our students will complete some type of service while they are at the Mount, and 30% of our students hold uh, leadership positions. So all these things I'm mentioning, they are all ways for you to get involved, get things on your resume, get leadership experience, so that way when you graduate, you're good to go. And um, 
We are number one in Maryland for employment after college. So we really encourage our students to get involved, get experience on their resume. So transitioning into application process and scholarships, um, these are our scholarships from last year. There has been a significant change in our scholarships. So every student is um, given a merit scholarship. Now this year they are anywhere from 20,000 to 29,000 off tuition. Um, and so our average financial aid package is around $30,000, which is very generous. Um, we understand we're an expensive university, but we give really good scholarships. Now to go over um, how you apply. So there are two ways that you can apply. Um, we are on Common App. I think this is our second year on Common App. Um, and then we also have our online application at msmary.edu slash apply. And there are two things that we are gonna need for you guys. Um, a copy of your high school transcript and then a one layer of recommendation from either a guidance counselor or a teacher. Now some optional pieces. Um, we are a test optional university. We um, I believe you guys have a lot more uh, on your uh, application than just your GPA and your test scores. So we don't require you to submit your SAT or ACT. It has no impact um, in your admissions decision, but our averages for SAT are around 1100 and ACT 23. Um, so rule of thumb, we like to say, uh, if you're higher, go ahead and submit them. And if not, you can just go ahead and leave them off. Well, thank you guys very much. Um, my information is listed here. And then also I'd like to note that we are open for visits. So we'd love to have you guys come for a visit and check out our campus. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks like we've got some extra time. I'd like to uh, remind everyone to please submit your Q&A questions and uh, I'll invite everyone back on to uh, do a round of Q&A. Um, any of the reps want to address the open Q&A questions, they can. Otherwise, I'll just ask you to share um, your favorite tradition that takes place on your campus, and we can just go in the same order that you presented in. Awesome. Um, my favorite tradition is uh, actually the first um, weekend on campus. So for uh, moving at Maris, uh, the first year students don't actually have to move or lift any of the stuff to their room. All their, um, all of our uh, returning students and uh, the upperclassmen come back and uh, come back a week earlier and help out the students in terms of um, getting settled. Uh, they can just, our first year students can just uh, spend time with their families, um, enjoy a barbecue while we do the, the heavy work and, and help them start off on a good uh, footing. Um, at Mary Wash, my favorite tradition is Devil Goat Day. Um, it's, we divide the school up by classes. So if you graduate on an even year, like I did, you're a goat. If you're on an odd year, you're a devil. And we have a bunch of games and competitions and food for the entire day. Um, things like breaking the tug of war rope or sack races or you know whatever they came up with for that year. They try to do something different each one, but um, that's probably my, my favorite on campus. Probably, as I mentioned before, pet graduation. I love that every year. Um, but also one that I find fun is these students created their own tradition called Jay Zister um, that like 15 years ago students came up with. BuzzFeed wrote a whole article about it where every year on a random day, no one really knows. Seniors will get up really early and post a whole bunch of Jay Z photos all across campus, put stuff out into the water. It's a whole thing. Um, and that's always fun to find that on campus each day. Excellent. My uh, favorite JNU tradition uh, is that we hold the doors for one another. And I think that's um, just a really good symbol of the sense of community that we've been able to retain even as we've grown to be 20,000 students. So even when someone's several feet behind you, um, you just kind of stand and hold that door. And then that happens for you next time you're going to the next door. And I, uh, it's just really great sense of community. So here at the Mount every year we have an all you can eat crab feast. Um, I know for our Maryland folks it's a really big deal, <laughs> but I can promise you um, it's an awesome time as part of our family weekend. Uh, the whole school pretty much goes and you're able to bring uh, your family, all your friends go, um, $5 all you can eat crabs. So that happens every year and it's a, it's a great uh, time for the students and the faculty. Awesome. Well, uh, I will 
me. I'll leave it open for a little bit longer. If anybody has any final Q&A questions or anything that they want to add, you can go ahead. Um, but first, I'll just say when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, this was just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So if anyone has anything else they want to add about their school, then it looks like another, oh, just a thank you. So, all right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Bye.